Let's start by focusing on Metadata's origin story. You're a software engineer turned marketer, turned entrepreneur, who saw an opportunity to eliminate technical marketers. What inspired you to start Metadata? Was it an immediate success? And if not, what should you have done differently in hindsight? Oh my God, is any startup immediate success? I think they call it a 10 year overnight success. Metadata didn't start in the middle of the night. I didn't have this like light bulb at like 3 a.m. in the morning. It wasn't like that. I am a software engineer in my background. Um, I've been dealing with robots back before I even came to the United States. The beauty of automation and how automation can completely take out technical repetitive mundane tasks. I've done it in robotics, which is fundamentally different, but it was pretty cool to see. And I saw what happens when you adopt technology and automation. When I finished my graduate school in the United States, my first job was in marketing. I realized that my technical chops are actually very valuable in, in B2B marketing because B2B marketing is very technical and very quantitative. And my first job was in a company called Spotfire. And I remember I got this project from the CMO who told me like, hey, this business is grossing like 50K. No one cares about it. We're thinking about shutting it down. Try to do something with it. Uh, zero risk. And with digital campaigns, Nothing very sophisticated, 20% off here, webinars here, pretty basic digital marketing campaigns. We were able to lift that business into a $2 million ARR within a year and a half or so. I got the bug of feeling how a few campaigns, a few clicks are generating revenue on the other side of the, of the spectrum. And I got hooked. The second thing that happened is that after I did that, I wanted to do it over and over. And I ended up running marketing for three B2B startups. Every time it was smaller and smaller companies. And, and I was successful. And I was successful because I didn't have marketing talent per se. I'm not a Don Draper who came up with cool taglines and billboard campaigns and television commercials. None of it. I had no idea what campaigns to run. And I had no passion to coming up with them either. What I ended up doing is go back to my comfort zone, which is data and software. And I put together an experimentation framework. I have no idea which campaigns are going to work and I'm not going to find out unless I run some experiments and what better way of running experiments by to program them in. And so I put together this experimentation framework. I didn't code it back then. It was a bunch of Zapier zaps and workflows and web hooks, what have you, but it worked. Meaning I realized that the most scientific way or most predictable way to actually find out the best campaigns that generate pipeline is for experiments to do trial and error at scale. And I paired that together with really good data to make sure that whatever campaigns I am running, I only run against the right companies and the right people within those companies. And that combination of right data and experimentation methodology was just magical. It just simplified life. And after I've done it in three companies as a hire, I wanted to see if I can do it for 10 companies as a consultant. That was my first stage. I went to my, my boss and I told him, hey, I'm going to continue the work, but I'm going to continue it as a consultant. I'm going to take nine other customers. I'm going to see if these things work, if this thing has legs. And I've done it for a year and it didn't work for everyone and it wasn't fast, but it did work. And it was much more effective than the status quo. After doing it for a year as a consultant, I started getting lots of requests to join forums and events to speak about this idea of experimentation. By the way, it's not a new idea. It's been doing, it's been done with stock trading for decades. In fact, it even has been done with advertising, just not in the B2B world. It's been done in the consumer world. Companies like Kenshu and Criteo, that's what they do. They do trial and error mm -hmm. experimentation at scale. But it wasn't a new idea, just in our sector, it was completely new. And to this day, we're the only one doing it. In one of the events I was invited to, it was a Bessemer Venture Capital Partner event. And I was talking to 10 or 12 CMOs. And I was giving this talk about experimentation using data and a lot of them loved it because it simplified a concept like that was until then very vague. Like how do I generate demand? There's all these ideas, but this became a very clear framework of doing it. I had a few hand raisers who wanted to work with me. And when they asked me about it, I told them basically a lie. And I told them, oh, you know what? I just started a company about that, which was not true. I wanted to, but I <laughs> actually didn't have the guts to actually do it yet. I was just looking for more and more validation. That moment in time was that validation I was looking for. And I told them, you know what? I do have a company. And it was not too big of a lie because within 10 minutes of that answer, I started my company. I went on LinkedIn in the, in the coffee break and I changed and I said, you know what? I'm going for this. I'm going to announce that I'm going for that. I didn't actually plan on 
updating, sending the news. You have two types of updates on LinkedIn. One of them is like a quiet update to your profile. Another one is a loud one when everyone gets an update and they get mm -hmm. the email, congratulate Gil on his new job. I made a mistake and I actually checked that box. I ended up getting like hundreds of comments on that one. People wishing me congrats and good luck. That was the moment that I started Metadata and it was those commit first, figure out the details later moment. And that was the beginning of it.